this is the folded bitmap architecture, and uh, bitman twisted. Okay. But the good thing is that uh, the sen this sense amp is going to sense those two adjacent bitman. So due to the differential pair, the nature of the differential sensing, so the common mode noise rejection <coughs> is possible. <coughs> because you sense those two adjacent bitman if you have common noise, and then, you know the differential sensing will reject that noise. OK, so this is a folded bitmap architecture. And then, of course, then you say you waste area here, right? This empty space. You don't want this empty space. <coughs> so this is a waste of area. So if you want to get rid of that, then you have to move to this so-called open bitmap architecture. And uh, for the open bitmap architecture, so of course you want to fill in the cell every possible location here. So still this is well done, and this is your bitman. Okay. And uh, here, the same well done, you ha will have cell every bitman here. And then your sense amp here has to change a little bit. <coughs> so. If you get one input from this bit line, then you cannot get the other input from the same array. Because here, as we discussed, you cannot get another input from here. So you have to borrow another bit line from another array. So this is different, different array. Because when you sense this array, you can make the other array idle. And the other array, you know, the bitman will be precharged to half VDD. So this is the open bitman architecture. And since then, it's shared between two arrays. And each array only gives one input to the sense amp. Then you can avoid this kind of problem here. That means here, the second the big line here, for example, you can have another sense amp to the right, and then you can do this way. <coughs> so you avoid this problem, and then the cell size, okay. What is the minimum cell size you can get here? 4F squared, square, right? Because each cell is just a one horizontal line, one vertical line. And uh, ideally, you can get 4s squared. But today, still, the, if you look at the industry, the, the product, we have 6f squared. And uh, we are going to discuss why is that. Okay. But theoretically, you can get 4s squared if you use OpenBitNow architecture. In practice, 6f squared, because you have to fit in the contact. We're going to see the real, lay real layout in the next. But in the future, it's possible to get 4F squared if you change the transistor structure to be a 3D vertical transistor. Then this is doable. We will talk about that later. Of course, the downside of this open bit map architecture is that you will have larger noise because the sense amp now gets the input from different arrays, and the different array may have different noise pattern, then you cannot reject the common noise. OK, so this is uh, the summary between the open bit line and the folded bit line. And uh, I will not uh, read this line by line. Basically, we have discussed that. And the industry is moving to this 6s square below the 30, 40 nanometer technology load, about like 2008, 2008 or 2009. And after that, in the past 10 years, let's say, 6s square, uh, open bitline architecture. So.
So let's look at some of the real layouts. Uh, first, this is for the folded bitnap cell layout. Okay, and uh, we see this array diagram, and uh, in this case, uh, we have this twisted location, right? As we said, we cannot have this cell here. So we have this twisted location of the cell. And then let's look at the real layout. Okay, for the folded bitnet. So here, this is uh, the layout, and uh, let's look at where is the uh, transistor with where is the capacitor. So let's say here, this is the VLAN. This is VLAN, and this is the gate. And your transistor is uh, is uh, crossing this VLAN, at least. And this is the, con uh, the capacitor, and this is the bitman contact. Okay. So you look at this, and you know the cell location is like a twisted. So why is the eight F square? Because you look at this. This is one cell. Actually, this is a transistor, and this is your capacitor, and this is a bitman contact. So this part is empty. Okay. This is because here you have two F in this side because this is a bitman. This is your bitman, and uh, this is your VLAN. So this bitman, you know, you need to have F for the bit line and the spacing between bit lines, the spacing. You have spacing between bit lines. So this is uh, half F and half F here. So let's say one wire, two F. And uh, in this uh, horizontal, this side, okay. So the contact is half F, because you share the contact here with uh, this, this one. So you share the contact. This is half F for the contact. And then one F for the L of the gate. And then one F for this capacitor diameter. And then here you have another dummy transistor, which actually don't have anything there because it's empty. But you have to pay for this space. So this is another F for this word that width and then half here for this spacing. So in total, you have four Fs here. So it's four F times eight, two F is eight F squared. This is what you really zoom in <coughs> to look at the layout. But even in the previous slide, if you don't have this detailed uh, layout from those two wire times one wire, you have two F times 4f, you will get 8, 8f squared. Is the square the gate or the capacitor? The square is the contact, the dream contact to the bitman. Oh, how about the circle? Circle here represents the capacitor, <coughs> trench capacitor down to the substrate. And uh, actually, for this layout, it's only possible for the this layout is designed for the trench capacitor because this one cannot work for the stacked capacitor for this layout. So the gate is underneath the square, right? Gate? What, what, which square? The square in the middle. Is it the contact? In this one? Yeah. This is a contact, oh. a dream contact. Uh, at which point do they use R cats for the access transistors? Which use channel access transistors? I will talk about that later. Okay. So here, this one cannot cannot support the stack capacitor because in this layout, you see that here this circle must be underneath, let's say, down to the substrate. Because on top of the circle, you see we have the bit now going through here horizontally. If you have a capacitor stacking here, that means you will hit 
your bit line, right? Because bit line is horizontally, and then bit line is on top of that circle. That means the capacitor cannot stand up at that as that location must be underneath down to the substrate. So this line is only for the trench capacitor. Mm -hmm. <coughs> So why can your bit line width be just one at? Because you need to have a spacing between bit line. So why the spacing is exactly one at instead of? Because that's your resolution of your lithography. Oh, okay. If you can make a spacing less than f, why not make the width of your bit line less than f? <laughs> right. So this F is the limitation of certain technology load. Right? Okay, so we can also look at this open bitna cell layout. For this this one actually for the is for the both of them is for the trench. This this is for the trench. And next one is also for the trench. For this one the the array architecture is like this. As we discussed, you share the sense amp between two arrays. And then you can have this regular pattern. You don't have the paste location. So every bit line and word line, you will have one cell here. So then you have this regular pattern like this. And then again, this is the word line. And then this is your bit line. And then this is your transistor. And this is your capacitor. This is a bit line compact. So in this case, you can have six f square because here again, this side is two f, the bit line and bit line spacing, two f, and this side, okay. Now you have half f for the contact sharing, half f, and then the L of the transistor. L1F, and then the diameter of the capacitor 1F, and on this side you need to have a isolation to the other cell, so you have half F, you share that. So in this, in this dimension you have 3F. So it's 3 by 2, 6F squared. Uh -huh. So, um, would it be okay even if they share it between parallel rows, like uh, adjacent rows? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay like this. In here, we show it's every <laughs> row. But uh, typically, in the sense sample area is larger yeah. than, than the pitch of the bit line. Okay. So, you may have to uh, share. Okay. Yes. So, this is because the D run is quite compact. Right? <laughs> So 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 it's unlike S run. S run you have larger cell size. D e run is quite small, so the sensor is larger. So it's very hard to have this sensor every bit line here. So maybe you have sensor here and then the other sensor here. So you can this sensor actually can take two space two two. Uh, but in case we have only two groups and we want to split it, uh, what would be the second in, uh, like? If we split the S run into alternate? Then what would be the second input for the second column of SRAM, of a sense amplifier? So you will have multiple arrays, so you will have something like this, right? So here, this sense amp you share between those two, and then the second bit line you have sense amp share with this one. So each sense amp will effectively take two bit lines pitch. You can do this. Okay, so then let's look at the, what is uh, used today in the industry. So this is for the stacked capacitor. And uh, 
again, this is the uh, 8f squared for the folded bit line, and uh, I will not discuss this anymore, so it's similar as before, uh, but this is for stacked. So let's focus on this one. So you need to understand why it's like this, okay. So this is uh, used uh, today in the mainstream industry. And uh, here, this one is different from this guy, although both are 6f squared. But this one is for the trench capacitor. And uh, this one is for the stacked capacitor, okay. So the difference is here is that for the trench capacitor, the problem is here. You say again, this capacitor is here, and on top of the capacitor, you have the bit line. So this cannot happen for the stack capacitor because you cannot stack that. If you have bit line goes through here, then if you stack the capacitor, then they, those two will hit. So you need to somehow twist this and then make the capacitor really standing out. So this is uh, one of the designs, for example. Here I think, uh, let me see. So this is the word line. Oh, let me see, which is word line. So in, the, in this case, this is word line. And this is the bit line. So each cell is uh, here. <coughs> this is one cell. Let's draw this out so you can have a better idea. So the word line is this guy, okay? And the bit line is this guy. And you know, under the word line you will have the transistor, source and the drain. So the transistor needs to be something like this. So the transistor needs to have an angle here. So this is, let's say, for example, if this is a source, the other side is a drain, the transistor needs to be like this. Okay. <coughs> this is a gate, and this is the source, and this is a drain. You have to twist the transistor like this with some angle. The reason is that here, this one is the bit line contact. So the bit line will be on top of the source, for example. The other side is the drain. And on top of the drain, you will stack that capacitor. So you need to make this stack capacitor here. And the, because you have to stack this up, so here you cannot cover it with any word line or bit line. You need to make this space open. So that's why you have this kind of twisted array. And if you look at this layout, then this side is 2f, and this side is 3f. So you have the 6f square. So here are the channel and the gate word line are not perpendicular. <coughs> you have some angle here. This is a unique feature for the d run cell layout to get the 6f square. Okay, so any other questions? So if not, then we can end here today.